For those of us with cancer, we face a dilemma. Taking life-saving medication, which may force us into financial ruin, or not taking the treatments, which most certainly will end poorly for us, yet preserve our finances, which we worked a lifetime to acquire. Not much of a choice, is it? I have before you two bottles of potentially life-saving medications. Does anyone care to guess the cost? How about a comparison? As of the publication of this video, gold is going for $78.11 per gram. That's $2,424 per ounce, or about $8,000 per kilo. Similar to an EpiPen, which stops an anaphylactic reaction, it can be a life-threatening response by your body that can happen in seconds or minutes after you've been exposed to something you're allergic to. Your body releases a flood of chemicals that can cause the body to go into shock. Your blood pressure drops suddenly, your airway quickly narrows, and if not treated immediately, it can very quickly be terminal. Another such drug is Narcan. Should you accidentally OD on opioids, like a police officer, accidentally coming in contact with a suspect's fentanyl supply, just a passing contact, or inhalation of fentanyl dust, can cause immediate respiratory suppression within minutes ending badly. One final quick example is insulin for a diabetic. When this life-saving drug isn't available to a diabetic, they can quickly develop a serious complication called diabetic ketoacidosis. Without the insulin to allow blood sugar into the cells for use as energy, the body begins to break down fat as food. Acids build up in the blood called ketones, eventually not ending well for the diabetic. Several major pharmacies recently raised the prices of numerous life-saving drugs. Blatantly out in the open, sparking significant public potential backlash. Key players in their price hikes included Pfizer, Sanofi, and Takeda. Around 2024, Pfizer jacked up prices on 124 different formulations. Ozera, a Pfizer subsidiary, raised prices on 22 drugs. Takeda's Bexalta hiked prices on 53. Much of this seemed to coincide with new company CEOs. One seemed to be getting away with it, so more tried it. What do I mean? Well, the EpiPen went from a two-pack for around $100 for years to $780 overnight. Price fixing? The vial of insulin went from $25 per vial to over $275 for the patient. That's uh, out of pocket. That's about $1,000 per month. After the confrontations, the prices dropped again. Amazing, huh? But they are creeping up slowly. Maybe hoping that uh, we won't notice. Amazing. So now they're starting early on the cancer side. Could it be to not seem too obvious? The price of Erlata, a plutamide, for the treatment of prostate cancer has been quite high since its introduction when it was approved in 2018. Then the list price for one month's supply was approximately $11,000. This cost translates to roughly $130,000 annually, depending on dosage and treatment duration. Now, it's about $18,000 a month. That's either 30 pills or 120 pills, depending on the frequency you need to take it. For those of you like me who aren't quick at math, that's close to $600 per pill. We've all seen this before in medicine. As more and more doctors are forced into big companies, they are less able to truly treat their patients how they think best. Instead, now, more and more, it appears, and I'm just saying, that if you have the money or great insurance, you can get premium life-saving treatments. If you don't, 
then you don't. Kind of based on your ability to pay, COVID took a toll on medical insurance companies. Many folded and others struggled to survive. They are now offering much less coverage for much more money. Many of us are just priced out of coverage. It is becoming unaffordable. For those who had great coverage and their providers survived, we have seen many caps placed on what was once really great coverage. Here's a small example. As a firefighter, the municipality that I hired on with to attract good police fire candidates offered an amazing health care package, including vision, dental, and cancer. We were told by this municipality that we would never have to pay a cent for our coverage. They were pretty much self-insured. Well, you guessed it. Politicians discovered this gold mine and brought in some fast-talking private insurance companies with pie-in-the-sky promises. Kickbacks? You guessed it. Our coverages, although still better than many, have been slowly eroded over time. Back to my particular situation. These two bottles of pills, yeah, the pills, at their current price, I'm sure that my coverage will advise me of a cap. When that happens, will my cancer become aggressive again? Will I have to go through the painful and humiliating end of life that I have seen while treating my patients over the years? Like Alzheimer's and dementia, at some point, it becomes too much for the family to try and care for their loved ones. But hey, there's still some insurance left, or for those who haven't protected the family's assets, there's that for the plunder. The nursing homes will gleefully accept care till the last insurance or family's funds expire. Then they will be sent to some government program to just exist till they pass on. What have we become as a society that big companies can treat us and our loved ones like commodities, only to be cast aside when the cash flow withers? I don't have an answer. For the moment, I'm luckier than most. But when the time comes, and it will come, I've told Shelley that I'll take my chances without those meds and keep my faith in the Lord that what will be done will be of His choosing. We sure hope that this sparks some debate. After all, there are so many more smiles to be had and given and so many wonderful places to go see and things to do. We hope that we get the opportunity to come across you all on our travels. So please, travel safe.